Okay. All right. Uh, I figured that today I'm going to do a couple of Godzilla movies because we are going to get Godzilla, King of Monsters, Godzilla 2 next year. Uh, featuring uh, King Ghidorah, Mothra, and Rodan, as well as Godzilla. And it is rumored there's going to be more kaiju on that film, actually. So keep your uh, fingers crossed that we might get more than just that. But so I figured, what the hell, I'm going to do a Godzilla 2014 updated version of this. And I really, I, I just want to convey that I really like this movie because I really hate it. The movie uh, with Matthew Broderick from 1990, I despise that movie. I really do. I, I'm i not kidding around. I really hate that movie. I just want to kind of let you guys know. I totally hate that movie. Thank you. All right. On to the review. This movie is directed by Garrett Edwards, who did a, such recent stuff like a, he was involved with Star Wars, new Star Wars films. And it's, it's starring Brian Cranston, Aaron Taylor Johnson, Elizabeth Olsen, and Ken Watanabe. And this movie tells the story of a a giant creature that comes out of the ocean and is is filmed in the very beginning uh, in the post World War II Japan during Hiroshima and there's uh, there is uh, a speculation that there is a giant creature but it was covered up by Japan the, to make sure that nobody knew that this creature actually actually existed. Fast forward to, to, I guess, 2014, and we, and we meet Brian Cranston and his wife. Uh, a, a scientist or some kind of industrialist living in Japan, and he notices that there's some kind of nuclear meltdown that happened in his the power plant that he's working at, and that ends up killing several people, including his wife. And then fast forward late, years later, he becomes this bitter guy just trying to figure out what the hell was Japan trying to cover up on in the beginning of the of uh, the meltdown? Why did why did the power plant meltdown? And so he uh, we meet Aaron Taylor Johnson, a a military guy who's a bomb. I guess he's a bomb expert, a specialist from the military, and he kind of just you know and and he plays his son, and he basically there's a, a somewhat of a, a a conflict of interest because you know he just wants to move on with his life because. His mom died, and he still doesn't know why or how she really died because of the, a, a just a, a, a nuclear meltdown happening in the power plant she was working in the beginning of the film. And then he's a, he's kind of just like a, a like I said a military guy with a, a family. He's got a wife, Elizabeth Olsen. And I just want to add that Quick Elizabeth Olsen, you know the Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver, Aaron Taylor Johnson, they're hubbies on this movie. Strange as I bring that up, anyways. So they, there he he decides to go visit the site of uh, a Japanese city that's abandoned. If you guys don't know, but there's actually is a couple of cities in this world in, in Japan that are actually abandoned. Believe it or not, and I don't know if they filmed anything like that on the movie, but it kind of looks like it, it was done really well. I just want to bring that up. And he's trying to find out, and he ends up stumbling on an experiment or, or some kind of, yeah, uh, giant egg because some type of, uh, or a husk or something of a giant creature that Japan has been covering up for 15 years or 14 years in this film. And, and it out comes in the Mudo, a massive, uh, un unidentified terrestrial organisms. And, and this is the kaiju that Godzilla goes against in this way. Because anybody that's ever seen Godzilla, we knows that Godzilla fights other giants. And that's why I kind of, it kind of pissed me off a little bit about another reason why Shin Godzilla pissed me off. Because there was no other kaiju except Godzilla. And this movie is a more, it kind of went towards a more traditional approach of Godzilla that we know and love and grew up watching as children, including movies such as Gidra the Three-Headed Monster, Godzilla vs. Monster Zero, Godzilla vs. the Sea Monster, you know, a lot of these different films of the Versus series from the uh, earlier era of Godzilla. So, and now it, it Godzilla had no reason to awaken at all until he, he found out that Mudo, the, the Mudos, a, a female and a male, that the female happens to be bigger than the male for some reason. And she kind of, it kind of reminds you a little bit of, uh, you guys, you guys, uh, Tyler Perry, a uh, Medea. 
don't you think she's kind of bigger and a little? Uh, it kind of, I kind of, it kind of gave me the Medea scenario, uh, like a little, a little, a little insignificant, little wimpy guy, and then married to this really big, oversized woman. I really wish I hadn't said that. I don't know. I thought I could bring it up for laughs. Anyways, so Ken Watanabe is a part of Monarch, a secret organization, and and bent on finding uh, massive, uh, unidentified terrestrial organisms. So he, it, it, it is it, uh, uh, Professor the the professor uh, makes a synthesis that Godzilla is actually a alpha predator who wants to restore the balance of the earth and the Mudos were are just actually just there to feed on nuclear material in order to have their uh to expand their race of creatures so Godzilla has to restore the balance he's kind of like the uh he's not a bad guy he's not a good guy he's not Roman Reigns I'll tell you that but what I'm saying he's not he's not necessarily helping humans he kind of looks as humans as just uh like these little roaches that like when you, you ever seen a roach when it goes across your your kitchen or your table, you kind of just swat it away a little bit. That's kind of what Godzilla looks at as, as humans on this movie. Because the just the scale of the Godzilla on this movie is just humongous. It's massive, awesome. I love this, the design on this movie. But in the beginning, we're kind of so he has a character motivation. We finally see why Godzilla really does what he does. He's not necessarily trying to save people, even though he respects it, or he just kind of looks at us. Like little rodents on the floor. Anyways, so he uh, decides he's going to go stop or kill this monster because that's what he does. He's a predator. And he kills other giants like him. And he restores the balance of nature. So, and uh, that's basically the, the whole movie. And I just want to, I want to just point out that the performances on this movie were actually, they, they were pretty good. And then Brian Cranston, including his wife, in the beginning of the movie, they, they really knocked it out of the park. Basically, Brian Cranston went from t from Breaking Bad fame. We were we were fed to believe that he was going to be on this movie from the trailers, and he's kind of like Godzilla on this movie. He's kind of it kind of becomes a teaser trailer because in the beginning Godzilla shows up, and we're like, yeah, they're gonna fight at the airport, yes, and nothing happens. They were just kind of what the hell. So we're kind of led to believe that there was going to be a battle and there's nothing. And they kind of just show a little bit on the news what should have been awesome, would have been cool, this little kid seeing it. And it, uh, so the uh, Elizabeth Olsen's son on the movie. So uh, I guess basically this movie is just a more, it's more about the characters. It's kind of like The Walking Dead. It's supposed to be about zombies, but it's more about the survivors of the zombie holocaust than the movie itself. So this movie is less about Godzilla, more about the characters. It, it it focuses on character development, and it does focus on Godzilla, but in the beginning, Godzilla's just kind of like a teaser trailer. You kind of just... You kind of just see him for a little bit, and then... Then he kind of, you know, is not there anymore. And it's so it, it really... This movie... It, it gives you, it teases you in the beginning until finally you get the payoff. Did it really pay off at the end? Yes, it did. Because when Godzilla and the Moodles finally actually fight, fight each other, it looks awesome. It, it's really one of the best uh, fight scenes I've seen in, in a long time. Because I really, like I said, I'm so used to watching Suitmation movies that Toho is very famous for. And it, especially with Ken Watanabe, he just kind of becomes this guy who just says stuff like, Let say. He kind of just, they, it, it's just like every other Godzilla movie, the, the survivors of the disaster just kind of become commentators. But at the same time, uh, Aaron Taylor Johnson and a lot of the other people, and you see people here getting caught up in the, in the disaster of Godzilla and the Moodles fighting in San Francisco. So there is a sense of like of urgency, a sense of panic that these creatures are going to kill people and a lot of people do end up. And so I, it, this movie really touches on also a, a classic Godzilla. Classic Godzilla movies that we've known and loved where Godzilla is, is a savior of humanity, even though he doesn't get necessarily, uh, you know, get as a savior or anything like that. He becomes a hero on this movie at the very end, and you kind of see the people 
Godzilla King of Monsters at the very end when he walks off into the ocean and of course the end credit. So Godzilla on this movie, it, why would I give this? I give this movie a, I'll give it a, a B, uh, a B because it's one of the best Godzilla movies I've seen in years, as far as the versus series goes, because it's such uh, battle royal movies like Destroy All Monsters or Godzilla Final Wars. It doesn't really pale. It does not pales in comparison. In comparison to those movies, but I'm just saying as far as the versus series is, see, you notice that Toho kind of went. In a different direction from the versus series, and here in us in America, we're getting fed the classic Godzilla, the Godzilla that we know and love, that we grew up watching, Godzilla versus Gigant, Godzilla versus Mecha Godzilla, a a a monster movie where you see two monsters square off, and where you know every a good time is had by by children and and adults and moviegoers alike. So Godzilla 2014 really is like goes back to the classic roots. Of what we love about Godzilla, and that that's I just want to bring that up though that Toho is going in a completely different different direction as the way uh, what I as far as I've seen in the last movie, and, and we're kind of getting the classic style Godzilla over here in our states, and I couldn't be any happier because I can't wait for the next one uh, coming out next year, and I'm going to go see Pacific Rim, and I, I I'm really stoked for that movie, even though never mind I'll I'll, I'll talk about it later on a later video. But anyways, so I'm uh, as far as uh, this movie is just basically a a B because Godzilla is kind of teased in the very beginning, but when he does actually show up, it's a big payoff and it looks awesome. It's 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 just the scope of it is just gigantic, and there's actually human drama even though like uh, we're fed to believe that <laughs> that Aaron Taylor Johnson is the only guy that could defuse the bomb in order to kill off the female Moodle from having any more Moodles and going on with the species. But even though the thought of that, I mean, I mean, it's a big military. You don't think there's any bomb experts besides him, but he's kind of like, he takes center stage. I, I would have preferred Brian Kranz to take the center stage of this movie or even Ken Watanabe, but we're fed to believe that Aaron Taylor Johnson, I don't know if military people are like that. I know a couple of them. I have a brother-in-law. I have some nephews that have been in the military. And yeah, they do kind of have that uh, uh, just uh, robotic sometimes. I'm not saying that every military person's like that, but that's basically what Aaron Taylor Johnson's like on the movie. And Elizabeth Olsen, his wife, is just kind of caught up, caught up in the chaos. So, like I said, this movie delivers on all fronts, on it, especially the bridge scene, which I love. That, that scene it just blew me away, including the scene where Godzilla's supposed to fight Mudo at the airport. That's Definitely one of my favorite scenes, and at the very end where Godzilla does the kind of like the kiss of death, where he he, he blasts his uh, atomic beam down the uh, the, the female Moodle's uh, mouth. So, all right, if you like this video, like this video, share this video, and subscribe to Lewis Bounds the Cinema Reviews. I am trying to boost up my subscriber range and get more subscribers. I am going to uh, do a couple more videos coming up pretty soon. Okay, so I will see you guys real soon.